This prompts a larger conversation to be had about the conservative movement, including where it is right now and where it's headed. To give his perspective on the changing developments within the parties, I want to welcome on Will Witt, a content creator at Prager University. So, Will, when we look at the future of the two parties, uh, it seems like they are changing in some degree. I mean, on the left, we have at least some type of divisions between the progressive and moderate wings. On the right, we have more of the more Trumpian type of conservative movement and the old guard, if you will, of the Republican Party. What is prompting these two parties, both of them, to be changing so rapidly? I think social media and the influx of just us being so divided makes it so that people have to such so strongly choose a side. You know, being a moderate is kind of a thing of the past. And so people on the left are getting more and more radical. They want to see more and more radical changes. And people on the right have seen what conservatives have done in office for years and years now. I mean, we've lost on pretty much every single cultural battle over the last 30 years, and they haven't gotten anything done. And so we as conservatives, for the most part, are pretty tired of that. We want to see changes within our movement as well. And I think that there are similar characteristics between the two because both of them say that they're sick of the status quo. They think that the traditional norms of the Republican Party or the Democratic Party, that being the establishment, are no longer working for the working people, whether it be on the right or the left. And on the left, for example, we see it more in the media. It gets a little bit more attention because we see people like Representative Ocasio-Cortez, these people who kind of become media darlings, if you will. But there is a movement happening on the right as well, and it is a changing party. How is it changing? I think it's changing with people waking up and being more wanting to put America at the forefront of actual our, our policies that we make. You know, right now, a lot of the people in Congress, a lot of Republicans have put themselves first. They get into into office. They put, you know, a plan that might help six months down the road, but they're not thinking down the line. The left has a very clear vision of America. The right doesn't have that. And I think this new movement in the right has really realized that. And they say, OK, we need to have a clear vision for America. What do we want to do? We want to bring American jobs back. We want to Amer make America a prosperous country again. That's I think that's what it's really about. I think you're exactly right. I think that's something, too, that we're starting to see in both sides of the aisle, but especially on the Republican side as well, because as you were saying, there has been a lack of messaging for a long time. I mean, even when we think back to the candidacies of Mitt Romney, for example, or John McCain, their message didn't resonate among voters. I mean, Barack Obama was a hard individual to beat no matter who the candidate was. I think he was a once-in-a-generation type of person, the same way that President Trump is a once-in-a-generation type of person. He's coming in, and he's now saying that he has a vision for America that wants to at least shake up the status quo, do things a little bit differently. And now we're seeing this kind of a little bit more of a battle, as you were saying, because in the past, Republicans really haven't put out that vision. So what are some of the issues that really do demonstrate the divide between the new type of Republican Party and the progressive wing of the Democratic Party? I think, honestly, regulations within business right now is one of the biggest things. You know, a lot of conservatives will talk about free markets and that we need to have our jobs be going overseas so that these businesses can get tax cuts. And I think a lot of working Americans right now who are more conservative in kind of this new wave of conservatism say, you know, I'm willing to pay a little bit more for a product made here in America because it's made here in America. We're bringing jobs back. We want America to succeed. We don't want China to succeed. I mean, look at all the stuff that, you know, all the PPE equipment and things that we needed for the virus that were made in China. I mean, seriously, that's like a national security threat, having these things made there. I think a lot of people are starting to wake up to this fact, and we want to bring things back to America. And to me, too, it speaks almost to this populist movement that's taking place all across the world, and the U.S. is no exception as well. I mean, you could even argue that the Bernie Sanders wing of the party is a more populist wing than the moderate wing of the Democratic Party. And in fact, I think that's why you saw 20 percent of Bernie Sanders voters in the 2016 primary vote for President Trump is because of some of the issues that you and I have talked about before. Uh, conservatives, for example, are traditionally against tariffs, uh, but they are looking at this current situation and saying, as long as we're looking out for the American worker, American American farmers, we're okay putting a tax, if you will, on these products in order to incentivize more things to be bought here at home. I mean, the same thing can go with these coronavirus packages, the PPE, the PPP program as well, which continues having those people on payroll. So do you think that the U.S. is seeing its own version of a populist movement the same way that we're seeing in Europe and other places around the world? 
Oh, definitely. And I think exactly what you said about the left is definitely true. You look at the left's uh, plan for America. In 10 years, we want to be off fossil fuels. In, in five years, we want to defund the police in this country. You know, or we want to have in another 15 years have free health care for all. Right? They have a direct plan and the American people who have, you know, especially young people like us, they've graduated from college. They can't get a good job because the jobs are getting shipped overseas. And they say socialism and this plan from the left, this sounds great. You know, conservatives haven't had that type of messaging at all. So now that we have someone who's coming out and saying, here's a plan for America, actually, here's what I want to actually do. Young people in America are saying, yes, finally, we have someone who actually represents what we want to do and isn't just in it for themselves. So yeah, there's a huge movement going on and, and uh, happy to be a part of it. And I think you bring up an interesting point, too, and it's something that a lot of those in the media ignore. It's the fact that when President Trump is out of office, whether it's in 2020 or 2024, the 60 million people who voted for him aren't going anywhere. Those same people are still going to exist. Their, st their same demands, what they're asking for our elected leaders are still going to exist. And I think that when the media makes it so much against Trump, they forget about the idea that there are people behind President Trump who support his ideas and aren't going anywhere once he's out of office either. So I think if the Republican party doesn't address those individuals, they're going to be looking for somewhere else to go even after this. So I think you're right to say that the messaging does need to be there and that President Trump is one of those politicians who are offering that vision that other Republican leaders haven't. I think you're right to say that. And Will Witt, I appreciate you coming on the show tonight, breaking down the future of the two parties. Thank you.